The trench coat, primarily associated with private detectives, has military roots. In this video, I delve into its history, provide tips on how to wear it, and what to look for when buying one. Initially, trench coats served British soldiers in the trenches, the word trenches so just is English, for the trench. Their distinctive coat pr proved extremely useful on many fronts of the First World War. However, in its history can be traced back almost a hundred years earlier. Trench coat history. In 1823, cotton enriched with rubber began to be used to make Macintosh coats, or simply Mac for short. The name comes from Charles Macintosh, who invented the waterproof material. It protected well from the rain, but at the same time it was not breathable and caused excessive sweating. What's worse, it had an unpleasant rubbery smell and melted in the sun. In 1879, Thomas Burberry, inspired by the coats worn by sheep farmers in Hampshire, invented gabardine. It was a breathable and waterproof twill created by waving cotton with wool. Soon, Burberry coats made of gabardine became popular among the upper class, as well as travelers, aviators, and athletes. Another company seeking its old patent for a raincoat in that era was Aquascutum. They popularized nylon combined with cotton, which provided breathability and high resistance to weather conditions long before Gore-Tex. To this day, the brand competes with Burberry. It is not clear which of these companies first sued the classic trench coat. However, Burberry achieved greater marketing success. Trench coat and its use on the front. Trench coats gained recognition on the fronts of the First World War for good reason. They were comfortable, weather resistant, and the color allowed for concealment and blending into the environment. Interestingly, the word khaki comes from Hindi and means dust. This was the color of most coats of this type. We must recall the conditions in which trench coats were used. Their typical environment during the world in Western Europe was trenches, where soldiers spent many days in mud, dirt, and even among corpses. Their days were mainly spent in boredom and anticipation, but from time to time they had to fight for survival to the last drop of blood. A good coat could be worth its weight in gold or rather life. Before soldiers were equipped with trench coats, they wore woolen, heavier and even longer coats called great coats. The mud sticking to them made it difficult to move. The trench coats was much better suited to the conditions of the war, especially in spring and autumn. Soon coats of uh, this type became extremely fashionable among civilians, partly due to Hollywood actors such as Humphrey Bogart. With time, trench coats fell out of use in military and were replaced by shorter jackets. However, in civilian life, they never cease to be fashionable. Today, the trench coat may have lost some of its practicality compared to modern sport jackets. However, it is definitely more stylish. What characteristics should a classic trench coat have? First and foremost, the fabric. Gabardine, invented by Thomas Burberry. It is lightweight, rain-resistant and comfortable. Additionally, the color, khaki or camel. Of course, trench coats come in many shades, but a light sandy color is an absolute classic. Another feature is the raglan sleeve, which provides comfort. The name probably comes from Lord Raglan, who lost his arm in battle, so he ordered a coat from a tailor that he could easily put on even without one arm. Of course, the trench coat also comes with a classic setting sleeve and both are comfortable to wear. The classic cat is quite roomy, so the difference in use are minimal. It should also be added that a classic trench coat has two rows of buttons and fastened at the waist. A trench coat without a belt, it's not the same. Straps are also present at the bottom of the sleeves. They prevent us from getting cold in bad weather conditions. And when the sun shines, we can loosen the arm 
provides our cells with a little more ventilation. Like many military garments, the trench coat has epaulets. However, they were not used to show the soldier rank, but to help secure the various equipment such as gas masks or glass. Similar functions were performed by D-shaped buckles. Another element worth knowing about is the gun path, also known as storm flap. It is an additional piece of fabric at the shoulder and chest height. It was supposed to prevent water from entering the rifle's interior. Today, it simply adds character to the coat. However, an additional piece of fabric on the back, increasing protection against rain, still provides essential during a downpour. The metal fastening under the neck also has extremely practical significance. Additionally, one must not forget the slit at the bottom, which increases freedom of movement, it should be equipped with an additional piece of fabric to prevent the wind from blowing from below. And when to wear a trench coat? A trench coat is suitable for casual wear, but it also goes well with suits. However, it is not a formal coat. It works great for travel because it is lightweight and effectively protects against bad weather. It also has spacious pockets for all documents. Its advantage is also that there is room for an additional layer of clothing underneath during slightly cooler autumn days and nights. And where to buy a good trench coat? If you can afford Burberry, you don't have to look far. This company has many different versions of trench coats. If you're looking for something from the lower price range, check out thrift stores. My trench coat is a vintage model and despite its rather large size, I feel comfortable in it. When choosing, pay attention to the details. It's worth making them as close to the original as possible. I choose the classic khaki color, but for those who travel a lot, dark navy may be a better choice. Any potential stains are more visible on light fabrics. Thank you for your attention and see you later next time.